Hello everybody and welcome. Welcome to Austrian Adventures. I'm Captain Kevin. Check me out on YouTube. This is number six in a series of seven videos I've made on the Salzburg Tyrol regions of Austria. We're now in Innsbruck and we're going to head a little bit north towards the mountains. Here we are departing towards the east. Power up. Keep her straight. A flying visual delight I expect this trip will be. Okay, keep it straight. Watch for it now. Keep building. 40 knots. Goes up. Goes up. Here we go. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Gear up. Keep it straight. Flaps up. All right, and away we go. We're heading easterly right now, but oh, look at this. Let's go for a little quickie quick visit of the terminal building at Innsbruck. Only on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 would I try this. A nice view of the Innsbruck terminal building. Right below us now is the Inn River. Innsbruck Inn River. We'll fly along that and go through the city of Innsbruck to see what we can see. Innsbruck is the, I think, fourth largest city in Austria. And of course, goes back way back to Roman times. And this was the main trading site after the Romans crossed the Alps, coming from Bolzano to north to the Innsbruck area, and then on to Germany. So a major trading town in the days gone by. Watch for the next video, which will take us along that route. Here we are in the city center, the old town. There's a famous old uh, golden golden roof that's made famous that people have to watch and along the waterfront, many colored houses. This is a ski town now as well. Great sports town, Winter Olympics of course. You can see the uh, mountains to the left, and there's mountains to the right, and there's wide valley. We'll still follow the river just a little bit farther. Our direction of flight, in fact, is going to be the opposite direction. We're going to go west and then north. But we'll turn around here momentarily after we turn the city a little bit. Beautiful bridge crossing the river, modern style bridge. Right. City's starting to thin out a little bit now, so that's the main Altstadt or the old uh, city center. So we'll we'll swing her around here momentarily. And here we go. Right turn. There's the city straight ahead of us. Over to the left side a little bit. We've already been down the river. On the left side is the major castle, the Schloss Ambra. It's on the left side here. There's a view of it. As we go along the edge of the mountain, you'll also see on the left the uh, ski jumping site from the Olympics and the Brenner Pass off the route going well off to the south. Let's go west. As we go west, we'll follow the river and the auto route. There's 12. Now this um, westernmost valley on the Inn River goes quite a ways. Uh, the town of Zerl going by. Way off in the distance in the most uh, westernmost part of it would be the great ski uh, resort area called St. Anton. Then you'd have to cross the mountains to get into Liechtenstein. We won't go that far. We're already going to BB-8 now to the right. Follow the 177. Highway up into the hills and in the mountains in the direction of uh, Garmisch Partenkirchen. Villages as we fly over, I've indicated them for you. Light Pan, I think that one was called. Still a good valley, no problem for flying here. We're at 5,000 feet. That's a pretty good altitude for this route. That should be about the 
highest we need to get through the passes. This is just a road, there's no um, river along this particular route. Just a mountain pass. But the mountains will get higher and higher as we go. These are the Alps after all. Riesenbach. The whole route today that we're taking is essentially on the border between Austria and Germany. Picking up a river now called the Isar River that we'll follow after the mountain pass and it'll take us next where we want to go. E533, that highway I indicated in green down there, that's the German indication of a highway. Mittenwald, good looking town, good sized town, I have to go back and visit that someday. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing these videos is to have a look up above at least places that I might be interested in going to uh, drive in a car maybe and visit. Your home away from home is based in Salzburg, so this is all drivable for us. Not a, not a day trip, but uh, overnight. Another village going by. My best pronunciation would be ooh, true, true, in lot, true and continue along the Isar River. This is a village called Valgal. The barn stay not too far from Valgal. And we're now turning towards the west southwest. Long way number two. Six thousand feet. No, I'm sorry, we're at five thousand feet, comfortable altitude. Highest mountain in this area is about uh, nine thousand seven hundred feet or two thousand nine hundred and sixty two meters. And here we are, the city of uh, the ski town, the city of Garmisch Partenkirchen. It's a uh, an Olympic city from 1936. At that time, it had two cities that were put together in advance of the Olympics by um, Adolf Hitler. And not too far away is the highest peak in all of Germany, the Zugspitze. Zugspitze. We're going to take a close look at that highest mountain peak in all of Germany. Thank you from uh, behind the aircraft of Garmisch, Partenkirchen. A little lake up ahead is the base area for the uh, tourism going up the mountain. There's a fantastic cable car that departs from this area. Very, very steep, very large cable car. And we'll start our climb above the Eibsee. So you see 7,500 feet, there's the peak on the left. Top of the mountain, I understand, has a fabulous restaurant. The cable car drops you off at a wonderful restaurant. There's hiking. And one day, you might have to do that. There's a little uh, high-res pictures of what's there. The proverbial cross as well. And we're now pushing to, oh, almost 9,000 feet. Come on, little airplane, you can do it. Little Icon A5 amphibian. Barely getting up to uh, 9,000 feet. Let's see if we can make it another 700 feet to go. Almost above the clouds. See the snow on the top of the mountain. The turbulence. And we're approaching 10,000 feet. That's just about to work. Wow, let's go higher. Pull out the drone sit back and relax and watch as we go higher and higher and higher. Here's airline height, 25,000, 35,000 feet now. Straight up. 
sky is starting to darken. 60,000 feet, the height of the Concorde. Used to fly at. Sky is turning black. My goodness, 80,000 feet. And that's black sky. 100,000. 60 kilometers off. 125,000. Hundred and fifty thousand went by there. Black, black sky, curvature of the earth is visible. And at two hundred thousand feet, let's bring her back down to ten thousand feet in carry on. Little side trip to space or near space. No astronaut wing for that, not quite high enough. And no matter let's skip this power off. We gotta lose ten thousand feet here, or at least five thousand feet to get down to the valley so we can carry on a flight to our next destination. So we'll lose our altitude going through 7,000 feet now as we circle with the Zugspitze not too far away. Right above us now, turn left away from that. That's it. Down to 6,000 feet, that should do it as we continue on down to around four. There's the lake at the bottom of the Zugspitze called the Eibsee. I know if I follow that a little bit, above this ridge is my valley and my highway that I can follow to the south-southwest. Yeah, definitely should be a highway coming up momentarily. Let's have a look to the left. Ah, yeah, there it is. And away we go. We'll follow that site. Or not too far. Looks good to me. Highway 187 in Austria. Highway 23 is called in Germany. We're right on the border. The Zugspitze is, in fact, the dividing line between Germany and Austria, although Germany claims the high spot. And we're following it along the Loisach River, where this valley originates. Opening up ahead of us, big wide opening up ahead of us. On my map maps, I know that's where we make a turn. There's the Zugspitze, and this region is called Erwald and Lermes. We want to go off towards the west, so we're getting ready to do a right turn. That valley looks good. Away we go. We'll follow this valley to the west. The next page of the river. I remember 179. There we go. Point out villages as we go by. This is a um, more of a mountain pass. It's not much of a river. It's a small, very small river. So it's... Um, road and the railway going through this pass. There's Lahn Plain. Plain and Park. Settled in at 4,000 feet as we go by Nischelbach. Nischelbach. You may notice the video has been um, has increased in speed. I've done a 4x, four times the speed. Roughly Almost 400 miles per hour. In aviation, we're still using miles per hour, but uh, the altitude. Peter Wang, for the village. And here's sort of like the high pass area, the Fairn Pass is what this region is called, as we now tighten up in the valley a little bit. Big right turn here. Oh, it's opening up right ahead. Oh, great. I know where that is now. And there we turn right overhead the village of Reuter. Reuter, Germany. Just south of our destination today. And the destination today, fabulous castle. Built by a mad king. King Ludwig II. He was the king of Bavaria from 1864 until 1886. The Ber Berkenkonig, if I said that correctly, or the fairy tale king. See, now I can see we're getting close to our destination of the most famous castle, I think, in Germany by the village of uh, Fusen. The castle built by Ludwig II. The Fairy tale king of Bavaria in the 1875-ish, and I'm speaking of above the left wing there, and the Alpsay 
the Neuschwanstein Castle. Let's have a close look. Wow. Left turn, get close. Bring it in right overhead if we can. Neuschwanstein. He spent so much money on this castle and wasted the wealth of southern ba Bavaria that the, he was eventually claimed to be insane. And that's the name Mad King Ludwig. Okay, bye bye. Up the southern side. Here's a view from the drone that I uh, pulled out our drone so we can have a bit more controlled close-up view of the castle. This is the castle that Walt Disney used in his opening shot, The Wonderful World of Disney. He decided that this was about as fairy tale castle as you could possibly have. I agree. Let's say goodbye to Neuschwanstein with that little wing waggle. Our way of pilot's way of saying so long. Arriva there, Chief. Off we to stay. Now I'll look for a little spot to land. There's not no major airport here, but I found a small one. On final for the grass strip in Fusi. 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 If you're down, flops are down. This is the home of Luft Sport Verein Fusli. A glider club where people learn to fly sailplanes. Okay. Speed. Alright, we got this. Let us slow down a little bit. Nose up to hold her off. I can see where the hangar is off to my left, so I'll have to come back to this end. And yes, we've got it. And Touchdown! Another success. We'll keep it straight. Keep it straight. Brakes. Slowing it down. Here we are. Take a look at the far end. And at the far end, we'll turn off to the right here. I think I've seen a building. It looks like a spot where the office might be. We'll check in, say hello. But there you have it, folks. Wonderful trip from Innsbruck, Garmisch Partenkirchen, Zugspitze, and uh, Neuschwanstein Castle, and here we are. That's our sixth flight out of seven in our Austrian adventures. Check out some of the former flights, equally interesting places. And one more to go, flight number seven, will take us from Innsbruck through the Brenner Pass to Bolzano. This is Captain Kevin. Check me out on YouTube.